we are now rolling on the newest episode of Conversations with Strangers. I am here with... Uh, Christine Marie. Christine Marie. All right, Christine Marie. Now, we really don't know each other, but we met via Facebook, uh, because I put an ad out there to post, and one thing led to another, and I have your phone number, and Pittsburgh. I spent two years there. No kidding? Yes. Yeah. Where? All right, so actually I spent a lot of time downtown. I lived in Beachview for two years, which is more like the Latin part of town. Um, then, uh, but really, like, I did a lot of my work in, like, Lawrenceville. I lived in Lawrenceville for a long time, Squirrel Hill, Oakland, um, basically anywhere downtown. I worked as a paralegal for about six months while I was there, uh, and otherwise I owned a production company for the last ten years. Wow. Yeah. Was that in Pittsburgh? In Pittsburgh, yeah. Uh, we started, uh, the first show was, uh... Uh, the first show that actually that we did downtown, let me edit that, because I did one show with my company back at Indiana University of Pennsylvania, which is in nowhere. Um, <laughs> but uh, the very first show that we did downtown was Rehearsal in Perspective. And we took uh, this one monologue, it's by Benjamin, uh, not Benjamin Bratt, or Button, something like that, it's two Bs. And, um, it's, I did it five different ways. Uh, it's supposed to be a guy going on a date and he's practicing before she gets there and he's really nervous and then she rings the doorbell and he's drunk. Ta-da, it's cute. Uh, I did it as a, a crazy person in a mental institution who keeps repeating it over and over. I did it as a hobo who's, as he's dying, he's talking to the Virgin Mary. I did it as a drag queen trying to get comfortable with coming back to, uh, from Citrine to Charlie. And finally, I did it as a serial killer. And it was awesome. <laughs> I can only imagine. Now, is this, a, this was a public performance? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like I said, this was the first show that we had downtown at a space called uh, Studio Up, uh, which was on Liberty Avenue at the time. Which, by the way, if you know anything about Liberty Avenue, do you? Not particularly. I know the name, but I don't. Oh, see, Liberty Avenue is where the hookers hang out. Yeah. And that is what the old, like, it's been since the 50s and 60s. Like, if you want to get laid, that's where you go. That's where the girls are, right? Um, so it was inappropriate for me to run down the street during auditions and yell, I desperately need men! <laughs> I could just see how that would be a problem. It just, you know, it didn't occur to me so much until I came back and my entire cast and crew was falling off the rafters laughing at me. So, um, but since then, uh, I've won a few awards in Pittsburgh, uh, including several from the Black and White Festival, which is at Pittsburgh Playwrights, um, which last year was really more like the Black and Christine Festival. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, what was the what was the whole point just, of just talking about Pittsburgh? Just for talking about Pittsburgh. What do you do in Pittsburgh, right? Uh, yeah, uh, I was there for college. Uh, I spent two years uh, in Allegheny County, and and I don't remember the name. I went to the Art Institute. Oh, okay, cool, cool. What years? Uh, 2000 to 2002. Oh, actually, okay. So I'm trying to think who you. There's probably no one that you know in the distance. Mm. I mean, I went to school and I went to the dorms and then I got an apartment up on Allegheny Hill. Mm -hmm. Oh, Allegheny Hill. Oh, here's the thing people don't know about Pittsburgh. Uh, Of the pedestrian hills that people still use in the entire world, in the top ten, two of them are in Pittsburgh, of the steepest hills that anybody can walk on. You know, you say that and I'm remembering what would have been the worst day I had in Pittsburgh. So I get out of class, I'm downtown, and the snow just starts coming down like crazy. Mm -hmm. And I'm standing at the bus stop freezing for an hour, and then I get told, oh, the buses aren't coming. Right. So I am very afraid I have to walk up that hill, and I'm on the far end. Oh, man. So it's just like... I think I'm gonna die that day. But thankfully, the what the the the, the, the shuttle? No, the the the, 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 the thing. Incline. The, incline. Yes, the incline was running. So Thank God. thankfully, yeah, like I was. No. I was. No, I've had that there. hike. You're talking about um, P P J P J McArdle. P J McArdle. You're talking about P J McArdle. How you get up Mount Washington? 
That's I why you would go up to your client? I never drove it. Right. I just, I, I rolled up it once and it was scary enough. Was it, wasn't it nice being a place where you didn't have to have a car, though? Yeah, but at the same point, like, all I really went to was downtown. Sure. Like, I didn't, I never got outside of the city. I, Which I, is actually really unfortunate because there's so much more in that yeah, city. Like, that, that's a very common thing for, for locals even, is if it's across a bridge, they don't want to go. And there are so many cities, and actually Anthony Bourdain is, like, everybody's pissed at him right now in Pittsburgh because he went to the places that aren't downtown. Duh. Like, of course, that's what it's called. It's called Parts Unknown. That's the name of the show. That's, shut up. Yeah, yeah, everybody knows about what's downtown. Right. I mean, and it's, it's downtown. It is kind of what it is. And, eh. Right. So how do you end up from Pittsburgh into Memphis? Stand-up comedy. Really? Yes. Uh, so I've been doing that since I was 16. I started at the Improv, which is in the waterfront. Um, and uh, about two years ago, three years ago now, because it's been a whole year, about two years ago now, fell in three years ago now, I've fallen in love with this, with this other comic, and we toured for two years, and uh, we came here about three times, we fell in love with the place, we moved here on my birthday, which was July 30th of 2016, in the middle of November, he left with 10 days to pay the rent, the dog in the car, and took off, and so now I'm here. <laughs> Hi. So, are you funny? Yes. All right, tell me a knock-knock joke. No. No? No, you're not paying me. Ah. Uh... That's not fair. You don't ask someone, hey, could you just do some of your job right now? Could that be that thing that you do for a living that you make your money on? That thing that your intellectual property? Could you just give it away for free for like just a half second, please? I mean, I've been threatened over the fact that I wanted to be paid for a job once. I mean, that was fun. Threatened over the fact you had to be paid for a job? I'm curious. All right, Tate, break that down for me. So, I reached out to this guy about doing some video work. Uh, without going into too much detail, um, we had talked about a few things. And then I'm like, so what's your budget? And he just goes off on me. He's like, F you, I'm gonna kick your ass if I ever see you, da 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 da. You know, I ain't paying you shit, and da 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 da. And just like, whoa, dude, like, yeah. you want me to bring my thousands of dollars worth of equipment? I, I expect at least gas money. Right, reasonable, right. You know, but that's Miami. You know, only city I've seen where they've uh, asked for red cameras for free. Red cameras for free? Yeah, you know about the red? Uh -uh. Okay, there's like two big camera com companies, uh, two big cameras, red and Ari. These are like twenty plus thousand dollar pieces of equipment. All right. And in Miami, yeah, bring one of those to us for free. We'll get you next time. Yeah. All right. Well, I just, I, it's a knock knock joke. I've been, I, I know what knock knock oh. jokes for years. I wasn't asking for anything complicated. No, 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 no. Um, I just. Uh, I sort of feel like I have to defend that, though. Like, I understand that. That, that. Like, this is this is a very common thing that people expect out of my profession, and it's like, you wouldn't go to a lawyer and be like, "Hey, real quick, can you can you just read this to me and like tell me what I should do with this case?" You know, like that's. Well, no, it happens in my profession too all the time. Right. I just isn't comedy meant to be shared? Oh, all art is meant to be shared. That's what makes it art. That's my argument. Um, but what makes it functioning, how you survive, is being able to release your material at the rate that you need to. Right? So like, yes, yeah, I'll, I'll, give, my, I'll give my stuff away for free Monday nights and Thursday nights at the open mic. That's when I'm working out the stuff. But I, what's mine is mine. Like, why don't, why don't a lot of, uh, why doesn't Louis C.K. just tweet one-liners all day? I don't know. Because that's not what he's for. <laughs> okay, I that's, mean, I, I, I know the guy's name. I've seen one bit he's done his entire career. I just, I've never watched him. That's okay. Um, but, um, I don't know. I, I just, I feel like there's the approach is the thing that people like instantly bristle at and I feel like if I were to be like 
it would kind of be the same thing as me being like, oh yeah, all lady comics aren't really funny either. You know, like if I started making a joke about that, then whose side am I on? You know, so if I don't defend the, hey, tell me a joke, no, then, then I'm like, I'm not playing for my same team, you know? Got to defend your art, right? Right. Gotcha. Yeah. So, is comedy hard? Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, there's a Billy, Billy Holiday quote uh, about how you can never sing the same song twice, right? Um, but with comedy, like, you may have the syllables precise, right? But, but it's never going to be the same. And it's being able to like repeat yourself is or, or not, really not being able to, to to repeat yourself is is the highest form that you can take in it. Um, there's so much more work that goes into it than just you know we're joking around with friends and then I said something funny and now I'm gonna write it down because like then you have to build the entire universe around why that's funny, you know? Like, what do you do to make a joke? What is the... Exactly, yeah, look at me like that. Please, ask me that question. What's on your face? I, I don't know, wait, 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 wait. What's on my face? Like, the, the building a joke? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, there's a lot of different ways, I would assume. Sure. I mean, I, I don't think there's uh, any one specific way to go about it. I mean, there's, uh, what is it, there's satire, uh, whatever it's called when you hit, hit people with the unexpected um, twists and turns. I, I mean, you can just, comedy is not just one thing. Yes, you're right. That, again, that's why it's hard. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, let's see here, you, you, you do stand-up, you do production, like, are you an artist? Yes. Um, I'm, I'm a many kinds of artist. Uh, so Industrial Gardens is my production company. We do theater, film, art, music, and collaboration. Um, I have awards in all of those things. But my latest project is um, Nomad Casts. And so uh, what we're doing with that is podcast networks. Do you know anything? You, you must know something about the networking aspect of it. Yeah. Right. Everybody's talking about local, 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 and that's where a lot of the research is, which is great. But also, there is a voice that even Glamour Magazine is acknowledging as girls of the road, the true American dream, ladies taking the dream as nomads, whatever the fuck. There's a voice there, right? Like, they're glamorizing it, but what is local as the world gets smaller and smaller and smaller is people are getting further and further out, yeah. and still communicating with us, which means we need to communicate with them, which means we all have voices that we can share with each other. So, besides that, it then becomes sort of like a 3D chess game of we all, we have all of these different devices, and, and not just that, but we have all of these different platforms, and forgive me if I never hear the word platform again, <sighs> but, um, <laughs> But with all the different platforms, how do they interact and how do they work together and how do they evolve? And how do you cross promote from all of those different platforms? How do you enhance one platform and optimize the other to combine a greater whole? Um, and basically, I guess what I'm telling you is I'm trying to build the necessity for virtual reality while it's being built, but, but I want to have a reason to invent it for this specific medium. Okay. So we are definitely coming up towards the end of our 15 minutes. This is cool. This has honestly been one of the most interesting conversations I've had. I'm into that. And I haven't had a lot of them, admittedly. This is a new project I've finally gotten off the ground. Thank you, 3D, 360 technology. Sure. But it's like, you know, normally I have some more standardized questions. Not standardized, but just they kind of go a certain direction, but you've just completely taken over, and that's cool. I, I like yeah. it. It's just very different. But I try to always end these with, you get to ask me a question. Oh, dig it. Okay. Uh, what is your goal as, a, as an artist yourself? Make money. I, I know that's really terrible to say, but um, the there's a guy who, uh, I can't think of his name. He was on Reno 911. Okay. He wrote this screenwriting book, and it's called How to Make Movies for Fun. Oh, 
a prophet and he crossed up the yeah. word. Uh, fun, or, yeah. Yeah, fun and pro- it's, But his point is, it's just like the nature of creativity is very much like nobody, like, there's basically three ways in music to basically succeed from what I've read. You either gotta be completely different, mm-hmm. you gotta be the best, or you, and I forget what the third one is, I'm blanking right now. Or you gotta be able to sell it, baby. But, but, but yeah. even then, it's just like, the whole reason that you do the art is to eventually make the money so that that's all you have to do is make the art. You right. don't want to work at McDonald's ever again. Well, but what's it for then? That's the other thing. What's it for? When you figure yeah. out what it is for, then you can figure out who can fund it and how you can fund it. I mean, I'm, I, I just, I've been doing it for me for years. What's, um, oh, there's this stupid cartoon. There's a guy named Chowder in it. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. There's a whole thing about how we're not gonna sell out, we're artists. And it go, like it takes apart how the show would not exist without funding, right? Yeah. And how to make money and all of this other stuff. You're right, but it, wanting to make money is different than I have a product and what I'm putting out into the world is a product that people wanna buy. How do I, like I've been doing this for me for years too. How do I do it so that everybody else wants it? And, you know, in saying that, like, that's kind of ultimately why I do this now. Mm-hmm. It's just like, well, there are now all these different platforms where you can be out there and get exposure and make money. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, before the internet boom, your great show sits on your tape deck at home. Nobody's ever going to see right. it. And now right. there's just this platform out there. And that's... Well, and there's not just a platform. Yeah, yeah there's multiple. multiple. Yeah, and, and, and that's really cool. Mm-hmm. All right, so I guess that's our time. Cool. So. Well, thank you so much. Another conversation with strangers in the can. <laughs> Woo!